welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. Yes, we are going to learn more about trigonometry, but on this specific one, we are going to take a step back, <laughs> a small, tiny little step back. Why? To understand the basic ideas of unit circles and how it applies in trigonometry. So there are advantages, of course, of understanding a unit circle. One, it gives us a visual representation to read these trigonometric sine, cosine, tangent values of different measures. Two, it also helps us relate, for example, what are the coordinate pairs for sine of 30 or cosine of 45. So it helps us, you know, understand the value of the angle with its coordinates. So again, going back to it, the visual representation is what we're looking at. Also, for students out there who are preparing for AP Calculus or wanting to take calculus in college, trigonometry with unit circles is a foundational concept. So please make sure before you delve big time into, trig, uh, into calculus, you understand unit circles very well. And before we start understanding unit circles, it is important for us to also understand and comprehend how do we read these unit circle charts. These charts are readily available online on Google, and you're very welcome to go ahead and check it out. But important idea is to understand how to read these charts. So the starting point to read these charts would be to understand the degree gradient angle conversion. Again, on my prior videos on trigonometry, I have referenced these conversion, a conversion factor, also unit set, circle. So, all right, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and get started. See you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see on the screen, I have a coordinate plane already written out so we can reference it. So here is a positive x axis, minus x plus y minus y. Before we start understanding the unit circles, so let's understand how this applies to each of the quadrants. Now the coordinate grid or coordinate plane, which is a two dimensional plane, has four quadrants. Quadrant one, two, three, Four. Usually it is written in Roman numerals, but I've, I'm just writing plain numbers right now. So as you can see, in the first quadrant, we have everything plus and plus, like everything is positive. The x is plus, the y is plus. On the second quadrant, we are, have a negative x-axis, which is minus, and the y-axis is going to be plus. Similarly, moving down to quadrant number three, x-axis is negative, and so is the y-axis, so a minus and minus. And the last quadrant, which is the fourth quadrant, we have the x-axis plus, but the y-axis as minus. Also take note, whenever we write the coordinate pair, we are writing the x value first and then the y. So this is x comma y. Always the points are x comma y. So as you can see, in any of the quadrants, if we take a look, for example, in the fourth quadrant, the plus sign here indicates the x value for that particular point or whatever we are trying to read. Another idea that we need to understand while reading coordinate uh, axis or a unit circle is we go around in a counterclockwise direction. So as you notice, the first quadrant is right here. So you're going to the second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Okay, so we are going in a counterclockwise direction that is considered a positive measurement. Now I'm gonna show you a unit circle right here. Now what is a unit circle? As I had referenced, a unit circle is a circle that has a radius of one unit only. So for example, and it is always centered at the origin at the zero comma zero coordinates. And its radius, if you can see I'm drawing the red line here, it is going to be one unit. So at any point of time, that is what we're trying to understand. So if I am to, let me just uh, get these points labeled. Let's say this is A, B, and top one C. Let me reduce it a little bit, D. Okay, so let's figure out the coordinate points for the point B. So that is going to be zero comma one. For C is going to be, again, it is going to be zero. I'm sorry, B was going to be one comma zero and C was going to be zero comma one, 
for a the value is going to be minus 1 comma 0 and finally for D we have the value of uh, D the value of D is going to be 0 comma minus 1 so we've got the coordinate points for the end points you can think of them as the diameters of the circle unit circle and this becomes a reference for us to figure out all the angle angle measures now I have again once again I will provide the link in the description wherein I go over if these are angle measures how do we convert them into degrees or degrees into radians so on and so forth so the important idea to understand right now is that this line green green line that I'm drawing is a zero angle and this is zero degrees and zero radians as well okay now when we go right here at the point C we have spanned a 90 degree angle right so in degrees this is 90 degrees and I will come back to what it is in radians just in a second, okay? Here at point A, we have spanned one semicircle, which is going to be 180 degrees, then another 90 degrees going down to point D, and that makes it 270, and back to point V, meaning completing one full circle, makes it 360 degrees. Now, as you will understand, when we complete one half of a circle, that references to pi value so 180 degrees is going to be pi radians okay and then again so everything is measured in terms of this pi so what is half of pi half of 180 is 90 so this will be half of pi as well pi over 2 okay now let's come back to 270 what is 270 270 is 3 times 90 so the pi is also going to be 3 times 90. What is 90? Pi over 2 in radians. 360 is 2 times, right? 180. So 180 is already pi and this will become 2 pi. So this is how we measure the basic uh, angles. Now right now, let's say you can see on the screen I have a 45 degree. If I just put down a line here 45 degrees. Obviously, let's say this is a point Q. OQ being the radius is one unit, right? But what is this 45 degree angle measure in radians? This is going to be half of 90. So what is half of pi over two? It is nothing but pi over four. So pi over four. So let's just get in the habit of uh, understanding angle measures in radians because oftentimes we understand these angles in radians or read these angles in radians more in trigonometry than degrees. So it's a good idea to understand this conversion. So now uh, let me show you the chart that, that I had. So here is a chart and here as you can see the descriptions are pretty much very uh, very much self-explanatory. So when we see 30 degrees here, 30 degrees means pi over 6 right here 30 degrees is pi over 6 how do we get to that again we apply the same idea what is pi value is nothing but 180 degrees so if you divide this pi by 6 you're actually dividing 180 degrees by 6 which makes it 30 degrees and that is how we begin understanding the degree and radian conversion so 30 degrees is pi over 6 now also take note when we go on to the second quadrant right here you have an angle measure of 150 degrees. Now this 150 degrees is actually five times the 30 degree angle. Five times 30 is 150. So what was 30? Pi over six and five times of that. So that's one particular way of understanding and analyzing. But as long as if you understand the basic 0, 30, 45, 60, 90 conversions, the rest of them in the second quadrant are just nothing but the multiples of these respective angles. Just like how I told you about 30. Same way if you take 60 degrees, so 60 is pi over 3. Again, that is going to be 180 divided by 3, which is going to give you 60. And in the second quadrant, the multiple that exists is going to be 120. So it's twice. 120 is twice of 60, right? So and what is 60? Pi over 3, so 2 pi over 3. Let's move on to the third quadrant for 60 degrees. What is that going to be? Look for pi over 3, 240. 6 times what? Sorry, 4 times 
60. So 4 times pi over 3. Let's move on to the fourth quadrant. And the fourth quadrant is going to be 315. So these are the common angle measures and you complete the whole circuit. But play around with these charts to get familiar and so until you get uh, familiar and, and read the charts efficiently. All right. So that will be all for this basic idea. If you have any questions, please do let me know. You have my information as provided as always. And uh, if you like this presentation, be sure to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.